Hello everybody, welcome back to a new episode of Doki Doki. This is part 12. Thank you so much for joining me. Here we are, still in class with Yuri. We're fixing to read a book. I want to say she went to get some tea. So that's what we're doing now. Let's go ahead and get right into this. Ha <clears throat> ha, let's do it. Okay, may I have a water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, uh, I might as well walk with you. That's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, did Yuri leave again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Monica, mind your business, bitch. <laughs> Ten minutes passed. Yuri said it wouldn't take so long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. A sharp inhale like someone is sucking the air right through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peek around. Yuri. Oh damn what she done did to her arm. Oh fuck what's happening. What the hell just happened? I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Jay, do you like oolong tea? What the fuck is going on right now? Uh, yeah? Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do like this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do anything less when I'm not making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. In that case, you'll even you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little bit to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Jay. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Jay, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over on my desk. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my, uh, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while you're reading. Yes, I have terrible reading posture, so that's why we must sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, oh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the reading position as the last time each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even more closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer into our shoulders of touching. How am I supposed to focus reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me her teacup. Holding in my hands that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. 
I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have some if you want. Aw, oh, that... that's okay. I won't take any. Are you sure? Well... If I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Does she want us to feed her a candy? <laughs> Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any hard time... Wait, what? She holds it so that I don't have any hard of a time reading it from her. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. Yuri looks so nice in this picture though and I love how like the starlights and stuff are going. I really like this photo. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehendly place my chocolate in the mouth. <laughs> Wait, place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh. Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, Jay, sorry. I guess I should have, shouldn't have done that. Yuri starts breathing heavily. I can't... Jay. Suddenly, Yuri forcibly grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teeth cut gets knocked over. Jay. My heart. My heart won't stop pounding, Jay. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Jay? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> oh my god, what is happening right now? Like, really? Yuri. Shit, you're freaking me out. Monica's like, hold on now. It's time to share poems. Can you imagine Monica busting in and her hand is like over Yuri's breast, feeling her heartbeat, quote unquote. <laughs> Let's go ahead and actually share our poem with Yuri first since, you know, it's what's up. <laughs> All right, Yuri stared at the poem. Do you like it? Jay, this one might even be better than yesterday. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday, I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try to give it more imaginary. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. That makes me so happy. It's so amazing to feel like I'm valued, Jay. Everything that you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it up. I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad, Jay? I'm not being weird, right? I'm having a harder time than usual at concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed. But right now, I just want you to read my poem too, okay? Oh my god. All right, let's do it. This one's called Wheel. I don't think we've read this one at all, so let's try to get into it. A rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding... Bottlehead, linear gearbox, falling, sky, seven holy stakes, a dock ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a tor, a tor harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping eagle wheels, existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in time devouring snakes with human eyes. A thread connecting all living human eyes. A telescope of holy stakes. Exceptional gearbox. A sky of exploding stars. God disapproving the existence of God. What the f a wheel relating a wheel rotating in six dimensions. 
Farty gears and ticking clock. A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks every second time. A bottlehead of holy stakes tied to the existence of a dock ship to another world. A kelid scope of blood written in clocks. A time-devouring prayer connected to a sky of farty gears and open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox. Breathing bottlehead. Breathing ship. Breathing portal. Breathing snakes. Breathing God. Breathing blood. Breathing holy stakes. Breathing human eyes. Breathing time. Breathing prayer. Breathing sky. Breathing wheel. That was fucking deep. That's the deepest poem we've read so far. It doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out of, out on your pen. <laughs> this is a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for a safekeeping, and I um I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it. And now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can you pretend like this conversation never happened? I can keep the poem, though. Or you can keep the poem. All right. Let's read Natsuki. So, this is definitely all about Yuri. And I have a feeling something bad is going to happen with Yuri. Just going to throw that out there. All right. Natsuki says, yes, just a thought. Jay, come on. I'm not stupid. I know how much time you spend with Yuri. It's obvious that you care more about impressing her than trying to approve your writing. To put it bluntly, it's kind of pathetic. Why are you even in this club, Jay? Honestly, I thought getting a new member would help everyone get involved together, not excluding each other even more. This is such stupid activity anyway. Look, I'm not in a good mood today, and I just don't feel like talking right now. Please go away. Damn. She shut us out. Completely. Jay, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you, which shouldn't be a problem in itself. But when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day like she has a collection or something. I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you're kind of been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault though, but I guess that's why I had to explain it to you. So I think you can keep your distance. That would probably be best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in my head, and I know how to treat my club members. Damn, what kind of treatment you got, Monica? Happy endings? But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way that this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, we got one called Save Me. The colors, they won't... <laughs> Hold on, let me restart this. I'm actually going to take a sip of my drink right quick. Excuse me. The only time I can record and tell you I'm taking a sip of my drink is excusable for reading. <laughs> Alright, Save Me. The colors, they won't bright. Beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless caffeine of meaningless noise. Did you see she's actually missing some word or uh, letters in there? The noise, it won't stop. Violently grating. I can't really read this. <laughs> Sequenching, screeching, piercing, sending. Like playing chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. I don't know. This was a weird poem. Delete her. Excuse me? Monica, that's some weird shit you got going on. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um... Well, never mind. <laughs> There's no point in explaining. 
Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself in difficult decisions. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when, uh... Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. What the... You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes. Uh, nothing is real. Wow. Okay, everyone. We're all done for reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is it about that festival? Well, sort of. Do you really have something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting a new member. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Jay joined the group, but started with some club activities. But this isn't time for us to become compliant. We still only have four members, and the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about any new members, anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just join, just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can to inspire them to find same feelings and brought you here in the first place? The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can do anywhere. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put ourselves together for some festivals, even if it's something small. Right, Jay? Oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Jay to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here join the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Jay joined. As for me, I just like it better than I do at home. And Jay isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're a president and all, but you should really consider our options for once. Monica is clearly taken back by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Jay want to get members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, it's up to me to rescue the situation. Now seriously right, isn't she? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Jay, why did you even join the club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of this anyway? What if starting the club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have the right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just, I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with new friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't that many other places like that for me, and now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No, Jay. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the, the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I would have just joined another stupid club. But this one, I mean, at least for a little bit of time, things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't even belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have a, an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent. I, what the fuck? Who cares about that obnoxious brat? <laughs> 
I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now, and I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president, and it's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Look at this. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Oh my god, who is she talking about? What the fuck? I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Jay? What do you get out of the club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decided giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing for everyone is to get along and for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members or but rather quality of each member. That's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's a necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone in a while. So if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Yo, Yuri's eye is bleeding. Alright. Well, maybe we can talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president and also a wonderful friend. Monica. I want to do everything I can to make this the best club for, for you ever. Me too. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Jay? Please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to chat a little bit with Jay before he leaves. Just to see what he thinks about his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled but doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see you two tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves Yuri as she exits the classroom. Things have been a bit hectic lately, haven't they? Jay, I just want to make sure you're enjoying your time in the club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. Yo, things are starting to get fuzzy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as a president. And I really do care about you, you know. I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With the mean, with how mean Natsuki is and everything, and Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird because in the time I've been here, we've hardly spent any time together. I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something so weird. There are just things I've been hoping to talk with you about. Things I know only you would understand. Wait, not yet. No, stop it. So, unfortunately, it sounds like Monica is trying to tell us something, but she keeps getting, like, blocked by somebody. I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and start off with horror, because, once again, we are trying to do all dark words uh, and hope that it lands us something, I don't know, different. So I don't know, <laughs> but that's what we're doing. Uh -uh. Look at a number up top, one, 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 one out of 20. This is gonna be interesting. This is like the poem of death right here. Yes. All right, we have the perfect poem of destruction. Yeah. 